Welcome to Calculus 1. In this video, we're going to start off by asking ourselves, what is a limit? We'll draw some graphs, we'll look at some equations, and by the end of this video, you will understand exactly what we mean when we talk about limits. So let's just talk crazy notation first, and then we'll explain the notation with the diagram. So if f of x is defined near some point a, then the limit as x approaches a, so this is read as the limit as x approaches a, of the function f of x is equal to some value l. So right now this is just a bunch of nonsense, but let's put this into a graph and then maybe this definition will make a little bit more sense. So I have a curve here f of x. And imagine I'm somewhere on the x-axis, so let's say I'm x here, and then I have a corresponding value on the curve, let's say up here. Well, as I move x closer to a, the point on the curve is also going to move closer to the limit. So this value right here is our limit l. And as x moves closer to a on the x-axis, then the point in our curve is just moving closer to l. Similarly, if we do this from the other side, let's say we have another x on the left moving to the right towards a, then that point on the curve is also going to move towards our limit l. And this is what a limit is. Now, why is this important? Well, sometimes when we have these curves, we might be missing a value there. So this is obvious because if we just plug a into f of x, then we get f of a, which is our limit. But what if f of a doesn't have a value there? Well, we can find the limit by looking at what each side approaches. So what x is approaching? It doesn't have to be defined, it just has to approach a similar value. Now let's take a look at some functions and graphs. So here's a very basic example. The limit as x approaches 3 of x is equal to, well, I want to draw this with a graph first. So here is a nice function x. It's very, very boring. So if we have 1, then of course the corresponding value with the output is also 1. If we have 2, same thing. And if we have 3, once again, it just outputs a 3. So whatever we put in, it brings out. So what's the limit as x approaches 3? Well, let's get rid of this 1 and 2, just so I don't have these numbers cluttering our graph. And let's pick a point x on our axis, and that will correspond to some f of x on our curve. Well, as x gets closer and closer to 3, f of x moves closer and closer to the limit f of 3, which happens to be 3 as well. Similarly, if we go from the other side, with x and we move it closer to 3, then also on our curve it moves closer to our limit. And there's different ways we can check this. So we can do it graphically or we can do it numerically. So for instance we could ask ourselves, well if x approaches 3 from the left then maybe 2 is a value. So if we plug 2 into x then we get a 2. Well let's move even closer. Well if we get 2.5 then we'll get 2.5 back. We can move even closer, let's say like something like 2.99. Well, we get 2.99 back. And we can do this from the left and the right, and we should see that the closer we get to 3, our limit will be 3. So this example isn't very exciting because it's kind of obvious what it is, but let's take a look at an example that's slightly harder. So here I don't even have a formula. I'm just going to ask you graphically what the limit is. Now there's something important here. In this curve, there is no value at g of 0. So when x is 0, there is no value. This is empty. This is an empty spot. So if I were to ask you, what's g of 0? You couldn't say anything because this is undefined. However, we can still talk about the limit. So let's say I just take an x to the left and I get it closer and closer to zero here. Well, what's happening on the curve? Well, we're getting closer and closer to this value here, which happens to be three. But what if I take it from the right side? Well, I take x on the right, and I have its value of g of x, and I move it to the left closer and closer to zero. On the curve, this g of x value is moving closer and closer to three. 
So the limit as x goes to 0 of g of x is equal to 3, but g of 0 is not defined. So there's a gap in the graph. But because both sides are tending to this one point, this is what we call the limit. So the limit is defined, but the function at that point is not defined. So using that knowledge, we can start to take a look at other graphs. So here we have 1 over x squared. We can draw this. So if we put in values for x squared, um, let's say we put in 1 and negative 1, then we'll end up at positive 1 for both of these. If we put in negative 2, we'll end up at 1 fourth. If we put in positive 2, we'll end up at 1 fourth. So uh, if we plot the graph, it will look something like this. And I'm asking for the limit as x goes to 0. Well, this is interesting because if we take a look at 0, uh, well, there's nothing really defined at 0. And we can't just plug 0 into x in these equations because then we get something like 1 over 0, and we know we can't divide by 0. That doesn't make any sense. So how do we figure out the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 over x squared? Well, let's take the limit from the right and from the left, and if they're equal, then we know what the limit as x approaches 0 is. And this is nice to do graphically. So let's take our x on the right side of our graph. So this x goes to 0 plus. This means x goes to 0 from the right. So this is, let's say we have some x here, and then we're moving left towards 0. So what happens as we move x towards 0 from the right? Well, our value, f of x here, is just going to keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. In fact, it's going to go all the way up to some infinite value. It's going to tend to infinity. And we can tell because it just keeps going higher and higher. So we can say the limit as x goes to 0 from the right of 1 over x squared tends to infinity. We use this equal sign here, but infinity isn't a value. So in this case, we just say it tends to infinity. What about x going to 0 from the left? Well, this minus means from the left, so let's take a point x and let's move it closer and closer towards 0. And now what's happening now? Well, the same thing is happening. As it moves up the curve, it gets higher and higher and higher, and it tends to infinity as well. So because the left-hand limit and the right-hand limit both tend to the same value, then we say that the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 over x squared also tends to infinity. So the limit tends to infinity because both the left-hand side and the right-hand side approach the same value, essentially. And we can also check this numerically. So one from the right, or approaching zero from the right, we could put in some values of zero. So we could say, well, what if x is equal to 0 0.1? Well, then we have 1 over 0 0.1 squared, which is equal to 100. What if we have x equals 0 0.01? So we're getting even closer to zero. Then we have 1 over 0 0.01 squared, which I believe is equal to 10,000. So these numbers get really big really quick. And similarly, we can do it from the left. So if we have x is equal to negative 0.1, then 1 over negative 0.1 squared would be equal to 100. Similarly, with negative 0.01, it would be 10,000. And we can see that both sides, the closer we get to 0, the higher the value becomes. So that's an example of a limit that can tend to infinity. And this is much harder to see graphically because we can't just evaluate it at a point. We have to see, well, what does the left side approach and what does the right side approach? What about the limit as x goes to 0 of 1 over x? So we can plot this. In fact, if we have x equals 1, then it'll be 1 over 1. So that'd be this point. If we have x equals negative 1, of 1 over negative 1, which would be negative, okay, what about x equals 2? Well, if x equals 2, then we'll have 1 half. If x equals negative 2, then we'll have 
negative one half. So I just plotted a few points, but you can of course try more and you'll see that the graph looks something like this. And this looks a little bit different than what we had before. So here's the question. What is the limit as x approaches zero from the right? Well, let's take an x value somewhere here and let's push it more towards zero. So what is this point on the curve f of x going to do? Well, it's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, and it's going to tend to infinity. What about taking the limit as x approaches zero from the left? Well, let's say we have some x value here and we move it closer to closer to zero. Well, if we take our point on the curve f of x, then as it approaches zero, it's actually getting smaller and smaller and smaller, and it's becoming infinitely small. So here, in this case, we'd have it tends to negative infinity. Now, what does this mean? Well, the right-hand limit and the left-hand limit do not align. So there's no limit. So we can say that the limit does not exist. And DNE is just short for does not exist. And it doesn't exist because there's no point that both sides are tending towards. The left side is tending towards negative infinity. The right side is uh, tending towards positive infinity. Therefore, there's no equal value between them. There's no limit that they're going to. So these are one of those tricky things that we can find. Now, here's kind of a summary. We say that the limit of f of x as x approaches a is equal to l if and only if the left hand limit is equal to l and the right hand limit is equal to l. So whatever value we have, we have to approach it from the left and get l and we also have to approach it from the right and get l. And only then can we claim that the limit as x approaches a is equal to l. So we have to verify both sides, and that's very important. Because if both sides are different, then there is no limit. So that being said, I have some practice exercises. And we can graph these, or we can just try plugging in things. So one reason we couldn't just plug in a value for x in this graph is that if we just plug 0 in for x, then we're left with 1 over 0, and we can't do this. But with these straightforward limits, well, x squared plus 2x plus 1, let's just plug 2 into these x values and see what we get. Because it can be the case that the limit as x approaches a of f of x can just equal f of a. So this is possible. This isn't always true. If this is true, then we say that it's continuous, which will be covered in a later video. But we can always check this to see if this happens. Especially because we know this is a polynomial, so this is going to be a continuous function. There's not going to be any gaps anywhere. So we can plug this in. We just take 2 squared plus 2 times 2 plus 1, which is just equal to 4 plus 4 plus 1, which is equal to 9. So we say that the limit as x approaches 2 of x squared plus 2x plus 1 is equal to 9. We could also look at this one graphically. We could plug in values from to approach from the left or the right. So we could check, like, what does it mean when x is 1.9 or 1.99? What does it mean when x is 2.01 or 2.001? and we can get some values. And we can see that it'll tend towards 9. What about the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 over x cubed? Well, we can't just plug in 0 in this case, because then we'd have 1 over 0, so that's not going to work. But we can get some values. We can graph this. So let's take a look at the graph. OK, so if we have, let's just make some markers for 1 and negative 1. If we have x is equal to 1, then we'll have 1 over 1. If x is equal to negative 1, we'll have negative 1. This already doesn't look very good. If we have x is equal to 2, then we'll have 1 eighth, which is very small. If x is equal to negative 2, we'll have negative 1 eighth. 
so also very small. So again, we're going to get a graph that looks just like the 1 over x graph, or at least similar enough that it should be very clear if x goes to 0 from the right, then it'll tend to positive infinity. But if x goes to 0 from the left, it'll tend to negative infinity. And because positive and negative infinity aren't the same value, essentially, then this limit does not exist. Okay, so hopefully you now have a good understanding of what a limit is and how we can compute these through graphs. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and I will do my best to answer them.